my car is hot. My car is or my car up. is hot. <laughs> the two different things. One is the car's thermostat is off the gauge. Or the other one go, is I just got in and you it's hot go, in here. My wife is hot. Or and my wife is hot. This would mean the same thing. No, oh. one, she's angry. Oh, she I didn't got do angry. it right. She got hot. She got hot. She's just she's hot. Mm-hmm. But my wife is hot. Yeah. And sometimes she's she's hot. I didn't mean yeah like I. Agree. Oh yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of weird. Yeah. No, like, I meant like. <laughs> what did so you, you say to that? I don't, is, know, I don't know what the press is pro- proper. Really? Yeah. Ask somebody today. Go. Hey, is my wife hot? I don't think you can ask that I don't question. Know, right. There's no right answer. You're like, um, no, no, it's not the right answer. Really? Yes, my wife's not, not hot? Well, yeah. your wife is hot. Really? You think my wife is hot? I think we go with no comment. <laughs> we'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. We've got a morning scripture. We're going to pray over your day. Don't forget, if you're a new subscriber, type on there in the new subscribe and tell us where you're from. Yeah, we want to know. And we need some more ALs. Hit pause right now and hit like. Okay, we're back. We're back. <laughs> and thank you for making us the number one daily Bible study. Yeah. We, and we enjoy it. We Can really we give a shout out to, uh, to our donors? We never do that. But there's oh, yeah. the don- the, those who donate, wow. thank you so much. It's been incredible. Yeah. And we appreciate you guys standing with us that way and helping us spread Today is word. Comic Quinz Day. And uh, Russell said this because in my sermon, I, I talked about how uh, I got kicked by Dr. Tom. Oh, it was an incredible. T- uh, you, were, you were holding the bag and he, and he was He's, punching and man. then he kicked, but he missed. Now, tell them all, right? You know the thing that he used to go outside and kick all the time. Oh, was yeah. On the, he kicked. It's like a bullseye. He was an amazing kicker. Oh. And he could kick high, too. And he kicked hard. He's not accurate anymore. No, no, he missed the bag and hit you. So this one, Russell said, which kick is harder, a Dr. Tom or Chuck Norris? We should do a Dr. Tom Friday. We should, Dr. I, it was, it's a Dr. Tom kick. It's definitely, <laughs> it was a definitely no much question. harder. No question. <laughs> uh, Donnie, Donna Pearson, it's, it's, it was a wonderful comment she wrote, and I encourage you guys to read through it. Uh, she, she's been attending church here, but she actually lives elsewhere. And she found out that her house got flooded. But after hearing the message, she was like, okay, here comes a storm. Right. But there's a blessing in that storm. And that's crazy because our, you know, we got in our new house and we had a massive flood that happened the same. But when we bought the house, Holly had said, she's like, I want to change the shower in the, ba- is the basement. Okay. Of all the things in the house to do, you know, Amanda, I was like, oh, yeah, baby. And in my mind, I go, I'll never change that. I will never spend the money to change that out because it's for the boys. Okay. So it was. She'll forget about it. It was crazy. Right. So. I put in a new countertop in there to get that done. I, I thought that needed to be done, right? So when it all got flooded, they were like, they re- when they removed the shower, it was a one piece shower, and the guy's like, sorry, we broke it. So we got a so new got shower. For. God's blessings are always in. God had a different problem. plan. Yes. God had a much different plan. Michael Chateau, my brother, he's a new subscriber, and uh, I do. My, you're an awesome friend. Miss you, brother. I know you're here then when you can be here. Wow. Uh, what an incredible man. I know he's been in my life for as long as, all absolutely. the way to coffee grounds. He used to go to yeah, coffee absolutely. grounds with me. And Love so you, it's man. good to have you. Donna, Donna Pearson, uh, oh, by the way, let's just, you know, pray, Father God, that you would Bring a reward to Donna through this flood in her house. In Jesus' Amen. name, Lord. Let's see. You're going to turn this thing around. Tanya, one, no, one, one, I can't say it. She said uh, she wanted to know if, if we could do a MacGyver Friday. I like that, too. She was like, check Norse Friday, but I want you to do a MacGyver Friday. And I study this because she says, I live in FL, which I looked it up. It's Flensburg, Germany. Oh, that's a long way so from here. That's great to see you from all the way from FL, Flensburg, Germany. Yeah. Uh, MacGyver can make a, a, a gun out of a paperclip and a rubber band that shoots. But Chuck Norris can take that gun from him and shoot him with it. So that's really <laughs> yeah, that the difference. Great one. <laughs> that's really the difference between the two. Uh, Kathy Bludgeon said, "Our family recently started attending your Mesa church. Us too. That's crazy." <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw one here. I can't find it right now, but it said that you guys, uh, I'm so glad that you guys are human. <laughs> that would be a really cool show. But are we? Are we human? One of us is. You decide. Yes, you figure it out. Uh, what's our scripture today? <laughs> our scripture today is going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Today we're doing something new. We're calling it the clear up. Uh, and Jason brought this idea, and I absolutely love the clear up. Because sometimes uh, a scripture is is out there, and obviously the word of God is true. But if you kind of take it out of context and you don't balance and weigh it in with, and the you know the Bible's very the whole thick, Bible, you're right. And uh, you could get the wrong idea, and then that wrong idea gets out there and starts to permeate the body of Christ. Right. It's like playing the telephone game. Like I could say something to you, but by the time it gets all the way around, it can get so distorted. Yeah. And I think that sometimes the scriptures can be the same. People can 
not really fully understand it, put it with the character of the Bible. Yes. Right? And really research it out and get a teaching that you go, okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is so quick, I think, when I'm reading Scripture and when, when I've talked to other people about this, is, is to go, that, here's what that means. This is what this So it's just, just listening to the Spirit of God can really help us. So it's called, it's the clear cell. Let's, let's, it episode. is. It is, is the clear cell. Clear. Yeah. So it says, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, for he who says, I'm sorry, not that one, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Okay, so I got I to quit my job because I can't work with unbelievers. Right. People that curse, people that... Right, I can't, I can't we even can't, go into restaurants, really. And that's actually what some, some people have done in the past, especially over, over the last 40 years, 50 years. There was teaching that got out there. It was like, you've got to... Com- isolate. We got to go off into the separate. woods together, and we're by, we're isolated. And so, what we want to do is like kind of look at the whole passage and see what he's at, what he's right. after. And if you look at it, he's he's calling the people of God in the in Corinth church. He's calling them co-workers. He's like, right. hey, you guys are ambassadors of the message of Christ, just like us. This is what that chapter is about. It's what the what, what a lot of the book is about. He's like, God has chosen you to speak His message through you. Mm. We're co-workers together. Like Paul is out there. He's doing the thing, man. He's What is he doing? He's advancing the kingdom of God. He's like, I want you to work with me. Right. So if you're going to wear a yoke, let's advance the kingdom of God. And so the kind of yoke he was talking about with these unbelievers is like, don't do what they're trying right. to accomplish. Do what we're trying to accomplish. And a yoke, of course, would be something you put on your neck. And like, well, you know, the, the right. ox would have yoke on right. their neck. And then you'd have pairs of ox, and they would pull the plow. Back in my farm days, yeah. So it's not like an egg yolk. No, no, no. Don't, put, don't be yoked. <laughs> no, no it it's about what are we doing together. together. You're right. And so the that doesn't mean is, you can't go golfing with an unbeliever. Of course not. Or it doesn't mean that you can't go to work and work but a how, job with unbelievers. How would you advance the kingdom if you were never around people that weren't in the kingdom? Yes. Right? If, if you're a salesman for real estate, if you just hung out with other salesmen in real estate, you would never sell any real estate. Because <laughs> they're not talking. They're like, so well, don't true. be unequal to you. No, I got to. So we got to be out. And the big one to look at is always look at Jesus' life. Just look at what Jesus did. Did Jesus ever hang out with sinners? That was their biggest complaint. <laughs> that was what they complained but about. But he didn't go and help help them do what they were doing. No. He got them to help him do what he was doing. He went to Matthew, the tax collector. He's like, hey, come follow me. Right. This is what I'm doing. Right. And I, if you want to be yoked with me, then come do what I'm doing. So he was advancing the kingdom of God. Right. But he would be willing to go into the bars, go to the parties, go to the tough places. People are getting drunk. And he would hang out because he was being a friend well, and being an influencer. How dare him go hang out with Zacchaeus? He is one of the big sinners. How would... And that's what you the people would go said. To dinner, and what did he do? He got him saved. All of a sudden, Zacchaeus, and, and we don't get to see the story progress. Who knows how many people Zacchaeus touched? Well, we know he paid everyone back that he owed money to, and twice as much as he owed. And then you have to have people in the whole tax collector, because I'm sure they had like tax collector conventions that they all went to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And they had to be talking like, did you hear about what, what happened to Zacchaeus? Yeah. That dude was messed up, but... Something's got to be real with this whole Jesus thing because yeah. to make that big of an impact on Zacchaeus mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the kingdom of God begins to be advanced. Right. And so really as an uh, as a believer, we want to be around unbelievers. We're just not helping them do what they're doing. We're doing the kingdom of God. We're advancing. We're helping Paul do what Paul was doing. Right. That's what he was asking about the yoke. He was like, help me do what I'm doing. What was Paul doing? He was being an ambassador of the message of Christ to get the gospel out to the unbelievers. So you don't quit your job. No. But you can be different in your job. You while being... They're, while they're talking bad about the boss, you're talking good about the boss. Right. Right? While they have a bad attitude, you always come with a good attitude. Sometimes they do things that lack character. You have character. You're, People are unforgiving, but you keep forgiving them. They're unloving, but you keep loving they them. They talk bad about them, but you don't. And so you're, 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 you're being a, a, an influence. But remember, where does the light want to go? Does it want to go to a light place or does the light want to go to a dark place? Light has to go to has to be light. So the light goes to a dark place to be light in a dark place. Right. And so it's good for you to be working in the world, to have a business, to do, to do what you're up to. Be a light in that place. And that's what Paul was saying was pulling with me to advance the kingdom of God. Because sometimes people get saved. And so new Christians will get this message. And all of a sudden they're like, okay, I can hang out with any of our old friends. Yeah. Well, 
Jesus, make, God wants, don't, you don't have to do the same things you used to do maybe with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go out to dinner and talk and have them maybe see share something, with them what Jesus different did for you. things. And you don't put Jesus, you don't shove Jesus down their throat, but they'll, they'll begin over time or maybe right away see a difference. Yeah. And but, some friends you do need to like have a little distance from because well, they might suck you their own direction. Of course. But again, that's about doing what they're trying to do. No, right. no, no. That's, I'm not doing that anymore. No, I don't do that. But I do hang out over here. Mm. So anyway. that was the clear up. <laughs> Little clear aside. Let's pray over the day. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, that you have called us to be a light in the world. And not a not a light in the light, but we got to be a light in the in the in the darkness, Lord. And so right now we're saying, hey, I'm not gonna do what you're doing out there in the world, but I'm gonna pull the yoke of advancing the kingdom, of getting people saved, of letting people see something different in my life that they don't see in their lives, Lord. And so you'll give us wisdom and guidance and direction in all of these things, Lord, and you'll bless whatever we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well check out this clip. The Bible says that Genesis chapter 2, God brought the animals to Adam, and he began to name them. There's a real secret hidden in here about the authority given to a man's speech, the ability to say things. There's power in what we say. And it says here, whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. There's a real strength here. Whatever I call something, that's its name. God's given us that. The problem is, is that in today's society, we've been trained to call things by the wrong kind of names. We would call our day, right, tomorrow. What's your day like tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow is going to be hectic. It's going to be so busy. It's going to be stressful. I hate Mondays. Pastor, you don't know what my tomorrow looks like. It's bad. We've been taught to call the day bad, stressful tough time. We call the kids. They're a handful. Stressing me out. Don't do what I say. Rebellious, disobedient. This is what the world's taught us to do. To call our boss a jerk. To call the job awful. We call our spouse all sorts of names. Ball and chain, lazy, forgetful, slob. And here's the thing, whatever we call it, then that's its name. And a name in the, in the Bible might mean more than it might mean in today's society. We just name stuff. Well, that's the, we name them star, we name mountains, we name each other. Right? I got a band. What are you going to call your band? Well, I'm going to call it Resound. What are you going to call the album? I'm gonna call, we call things, we name things, we're used to it, but we don't put a lot of value in it. But God was really specific about how things were called. He, Went to Zechariah, and I, I need you to call this son John. It was, had to be the name John. Samson's parents say, I need you to call him Samson, for that will be his name. He goes to Joseph, and he said, I want you to call the baby that Mary's carrying Jesus, for he will redeem man of the sins of the world. It meant something. It had to be that name, and he needed a man to say it. He had to have Adam say it. He had to have Zechariah say it. He had to have Joseph say it out loud. That's Jesus. Something about this gift that God's given us. So whatever we call it, that will be its name. What if we started calling our day by a new name? We're like, what's your Monday like? It's going to be wonderful. My Monday's productive. I'm excited about my Monday. What if we called our marriage healthy, strong? Amazing. It's a kingdom marriage. What if it's not? That's okay. We're imitating our God who calls things that are not as though they were. What's your husband like? He's amazing. He's brilliant. He never forgets a thing. He's very attentive. He's romantic. He's passionate. Your husband is all those things? I'm calling it by name. Thumbs up. Like it. Share, subscribe. If you subscribe, make sure you write down where you're from in the comments. Right. And I want some more Flensburg, Germany. So if you're from Flensburg, let us know. Or if, if you live in Flensburg, share it with all your oh, friends yeah. because we're really trying to take that Flensburg area. is our big... FL. It's kind of... <laughs> we're trying to get the FL. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And Nebraska, too. That would be the and NFL. Oh, the... <laughs> That was an awful joke. Please cut it before no, we get there. Whatever that was. Don't cut it. I want him. Don't ever. NFL. Nash don't ever play Nebraska. That. What is the NFL for in Nebraska? 
It's Germany. It's the town in Germany. Oh, well, Nebraska in Germany. Yeah, of course there is. It's a little. It's a town in FL. Yeah, it's a. Well, it's an alley. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.